The purpose of this movie is to go through some of the basic parts to the 35mm SLR film camera. Uh, and this camera that I'm using is a fully manual Nikon camera. It's a Nikon FM2. Kind of a, a workhorse. Uh, it's all metal construction. It'll last a long time. You can buy these used online. Uh, I happen to really like this camera. Uh, let's go through some of the parts though. Uh, does it have an on and off switch? That's a good question. Um, the answer is yes and no. It has a way to ensure that the meter, the light meter, which draws battery power, uh, will not come on, and that is by pressing the film advance lever in. So when the film advance lever is folded in like so, then the meter won't come on, and there's one other advantage to having, to considering that an off position, uh, which is when it's folded in, you can no longer trip the shutter. So you couldn't accidentally make a picture. You couldn't accidentally expose some film uh, as long as that is folded in. So that will function as our on and off switch, but it's also the film advanced lever. Uh, every time you make a picture, you have to advance the film and trip the shutter again. Let's talk about the, the two main components of the camera, which are the lens and the camera body. Uh, 35 millimeter SLR film camera should uh, be able to take interchangeable lenses. So you can choose lenses of different focal lengths. Uh, right now I have a wide angle lens on here, uh, but I'm gonna take this off. There's usually a button somewhere uh, to press and to sort of dismount the lens from the body like I've done here. So this is a uh, basic lens. It's a fixed focal length lens, which means it doesn't have any uh, zoom capability. Uh, you can't, you can't um, change the focal length of it from wide to narrow. Uh, the, the main thing about the lens is that it is where the aperture is. Uh, the aperture is the adjustable opening in the lens that allows light into the camera body uh, so you can expose your film. And on this camera, uh, hopefully you can see there's an aperture ring, which is this thing here. You see numbers and you see a dot that can line up to different apertures. And those apertures have different sizes. Uh, that's what it means for them to be adjustable. And if I turn it like so, hopefully you'll be able to see as I open and close the lens, uh, choosing either a small aperture or a large aperture to let in more light. Uh, so that's how that works. Uh, the lens is also on, uh, on this camera, it's how you focus your, your image. And here's a focus ring so you can focus from near to far making it either blurry or sharp or focusing in on whatever you consider your, uh, the main part of your subject. So I'm gonna put this back on the camera. Uh, to put a lens back on the camera, there's every different camera manufacturer has a different sort of lens mount uh, and you should become familiar with yours. In this case, I just see a black dot there and a white dot there, which I can line up and snap the lens uh, back onto the camera. All right, so let's move on to the camera body itself. Uh, every camera will have a lens with adjustable apertures and also uh, the ability to control the shutter speed. The shutter is the device in the camera body that opens and closes to allow light to get to the film plane. So light will pass through the lens and then there's a shutter, there's, uh, there's one more thing it has to pass through to get to the film plane. The film plane is just behind uh, this rear door and there's a shutter in front of it that will open and close to allow the film to actually be exposed. So the, the lens controls uh, the intensity of the light coming through based on the aperture size uh, and then the shutter controls how long that exposure uh, is allowed to happen. The shutter adjustment on a manual camera is usually right on a dial uh, here and it's a dial that shows numbers, displays different numbers, and these numbers are typically fractions of a second. Um, so when I set this to 60, like it's set right now, that means 1 60th of a second. So the shutter will open for 1 60th of a second and then close again. If I change it to two, it'll open for half a second and then close again. If I change it to one, in this case, one means one full second. Uh, Typically you'll have a setting called B on your camera and, and B means that the shutter will remain open for as long as you hold your finger down on the shutter release button or maybe use a cable release so you can do long exposures. Uh, also, 
You might notice on your camera that one shutter speed has it is displayed in a different color or it's got some sort of indication uh, to show that it's unique in some way. And what that is, uh, is the, the shutter speed, the fastest shutter speed you can use when shooting flash photography with that particular camera. Um, you can go into more detail on that at another time. But that's how the, the shutter speed is, is selected. And if you listen uh, to what a half of a second sounds like, you can hear it open, you can hear it close. When you get to, to a thousandth of a second or something, it just sounds like one, one sound. Uh, so, so that's how you control the shutter. Uh, and I'm gonna show you now uh, what the shutter looks like in action. And to do that, I have to open the camera back. And on some cameras, and this camera has a, a camera back lock lever. And this is a safety mechanism uh, to prevent you from, or prevent the, back, prevent the back of the camera from opening when you don't want it to. Because if you open the back of the camera, you expose your film. So usually most cameras, the, the way you open the back is you tug up on this knob here, which is the film rewind knob. Uh, but in this case, I can't tug up on it. That's an indication that I shouldn't force it, that there's something else I need to do. And it might be difficult to see, but there's a small tab here, a lever, that I need to pull down simultaneously while I pull this up. And then I can tug it a little further and the back will open. And there you can see uh, the shutter immediately. Uh, that's this little window right here. And the shutter is a part of the camera you never want to touch. Uh, it can be quite fragile depending on what kind of a camera it is. Uh, what kind of a camera it is. Uh, so never touch that. Uh, sometimes people ask, is, can I touch this pressure plate? Um, there's no reason to touch it, but it's, it's, not, uh, it's not as critical that you don't touch that as it is that you don't touch uh, the shutter. So this is just a film plate, a, uh, a pressure plate to hold the film flat when your film is loaded in there. But let's get back to the shutter and show you what it looks like when it opens and closes. I'll go to one second this time and that's what happens. So the light comes through the lens of the camera and then allows you allow it to come through that open shutter and the film is lying across there so that that's how you make your exposure. Anything else about this? Let's see, shutter release button, no. So I'm gonna close this up and I'll do another film on loading the camera uh, in a little while so you can see that. Okay, so we have shutter, shutter selection. Uh, another adjustment you need to know about on your camera is how to set the ISO. Uh, the ISO is an indication of this, the, the, sensitive, the, the light sensitivity of the film you're using. So the higher the number, the more sensitive it is to light, the lower the number, the less sensitive it is to light. And you need to tell your camera what ISO film you're shooting so it can help give you suggestions with the light meter as to proper exposure for whatever scene you're shooting. So it needs to know, the camera computer needs to know, or the light meter needs to know what kind of film or what sensitivity film you're, you're using. And that's just on the box of the film. It might say 100 or 400. And that's something you load, uh, something you indicate to the camera right when you load the film. So in this case, uh, there's a window here, a little ISO indicator, and there's a ring on the outside which is hard to see, but I can pull that up. And as I spin that, I can change uh, what number is indicated in that small ISO window. So then you just put it to the ISO that you want to shoot, whatever film you've got, and you're done for that whole roll of film. Uh, the shutter release button is usually right there on the right, on the top, um, pretty self-explanatory. This camera also has uh, a couple of other uh, features. It has a multiple exposure tab that can help you make multiple exposures. Uh, not necessary to go into that too much right now. Uh, most cameras, 35 millimeter cameras, will have a hot shoe mount, uh, and that's where you can put a flash on top if you want. Most cameras will have a uh, tripod mount, a tripod thread, so you, you can mount this to any, uh, any tripod. It's a standard thread. This is the battery compartment. Uh, one other thing before I finish this film, although I'll cover it more in loading and unloading the film, but when you, when you are shooting uh, a roll of film, uh, each time you make a frame, you'll see a film counter window, which will keep track of how many pictures you've made. 
in this window. So if you've loaded a roll of 36 exposure film, when you get to number 36 or so, you'll go to advance the film and you won't be able to because you're at the end of the roll. And it's important not to force that because you will actually end up tearing the end of the film off the take-up spool. Uh, and that's something you really do not want to do. But when you get to the end of the roll, it's time to rewind it. Uh, to rewind the film, you use the film rewind knob. It usually has a lever like that. And you can see an arrow indicating which way you're supposed to spin this. But it's very, very important that before you do that, you release um, the film rewind release button. You, you press the film rewind release button, which on this camera and most cameras is just a little tab, a little button on the bottom that you need to push in. And that will allow you to reverse the direction of the, of the rewind. So once you push that in, then you can go ahead and rewind your film. But I'll, I'll show that uh, again later. I just wanted to show where that was. Um, let's see. I think that's about all for now. Uh, and I'll talk to you in the next film. Bye-bye.